Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. As a Cytrus producer, Nano Style or Tristan Style percussion technique was one of the first I've learned and used. And I think most of us Cytrus producers are familiar with it, or maybe that's just me and my imposter syndrome. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to explain everything in a second. But if you're familiar with the Nano Style percussion technique, or as non Cytrus producers call it, Carplus Strong synthesis, then I might have a few tricks to spice up this classic, or at least I consider it classic, technique. Now a little disclaimer before we start, I'll be using Serum and Bitwix native devices for my demonstration, but don't let that hold you down. Everything I'll discuss and show here can be replicated in your door of choice and plugins of choice. So with that said, let's dive into this tutorial. So what is Carpus Strong Synthesis? Basically, it's a burst of noise that goes into a really short delay. I'll use the delay plus in here with a lot of feedback and short delay. It's a pretty psychedelic technique on its own and we actually use it a lot for physical modeling type of synthesis like for example to create a violin from just noise and a short delay. But in Psytrance we use this technique essentially for the famous nano style percussion which is pretty simple. You'll take a bunch of samples, you'll put them in your sampler of choice. Here I have the drum machine from uh, Bitwig and essentially we have these samples. When I'll add a really fast delay, we will get this. Pretty cool to create these kind of metallic percussions and also to keep things in tune. I've already explained the formula that we need to use to set the delay to the exact pitch in a tutorial I made, I think, a couple of years ago. I'll leave the link right in here. But essentially, if I'll get a tuner, you can see that things get in tune depending on the delay's time. Okay, pretty cool, but we live in 2022 and delays are so overrated, man. We're going to use a count filter and this is the first trick to spice up the sound. We'll use a count filter because I think count filter sounds way better than delays. They're essentially doing the same thing. They're delaying the signal and adding it to the dry signal. But apart from me thinking that they sound better than delays, it's actually easier to set them up because instead of doing the whole calculations of converting your root frequency into a delay time, here you will just add your root frequency. This is a project which I wrote in G sharp and G sharp is basically 51.9 Hertz. Yes, I did my homework before recording this tutorial and now Check this out, we have a perfectly in tune percussions using the comp filter. Perfect. So this is the comp filter part done. Now what I like to do to spice this sound up, I'll leave the sampler on repitch mode. I think in this case it sounds best in Bitwig. And I'm going to set the speed to something really, really, really slow. Maybe 4%, just so we will be able to hear it. Okay, pretty cool. And I'll set this value to all of the other layers. So they all sound the same. And I'll add a random modulator in here, just to keep things simple for the sake of this tutorial. And I'll route the random modulator to the speed of the sampler, or basically in this case, the speed is the pitch. So I'll set this random modulator in here to one and eight. For now, if I right click on the speed knob in here, I can set copy modulation to all layers. So it'll copy the random modulation that I've just routed to all of the layers. Now we have this.
pretty cool and what I'll do I'll add an arpeggiator and this arpeggiator I'll set it to one step and actually I'll add a random modulator on the pitch in here and I'll set it to 11 semitones 11 semitones will basically scan through all of these 11 samples in here so I'll just set it to 11 and I'll set the rate to 1 16th and check this out now we have this Pretty, pretty cool. We just got ourselves a really classic sound. Now let's spice it up a step further. So what I like to do in these cases is I'll take a filter. I'll use Bitwig's native filter. You can use whatever filter you like. I'll set it to bandpass 4 in here and I'll crank that resonance pretty high. Now if I'll play with the cutoff, check this out. Pretty nice, but this modulator in here, I'll set it to 16th note. This is the modulator modulating the pitch of the samples. Now we have this. Pretty nice, I'll even crank that resonance a little bit higher. And now I'll add some delay. I'll use delay plus, and now we have something that sounds like this. Pretty, pretty cool and pretty psychedelic, but I want to push this a step further. So what I'll do in here, I'll add a pitch shifter. Pitch shifters, in my opinion, are so underrated. Like, I rarely see people use them, maybe that's just me, but they can add a really nice touch to almost any materials that goes through them. I'll add a random modulator on the cutoff, just for the sake of the demonstration, to keep it simple. I set it to sample and glide, half note, let it modulate a little bit. I'll modulate it manually at the end. Check this out. Pretty, pretty cool. And if we play with the grain, we'll get a different taste to this pitch shifting effect. Pretty psychedelic, right? So what I'll do in here, I'll take a random modulator and this random modulator will modulate the pitch shifting. Set it to maybe, yeah, quarter note, sample and glide. And I'll set the grain to 100%. I think it sounds best just like so. I'll add another random modulator. And this random modulator will modulate the grains a tiny bit. Also, sample and glide. Let's leave it to half note for now. Oh, this random modulator should be set to bipolar. I want to modulate negative and positive values. Now we have this. Let's modulate the cutoff frequency manually. The pitch modulation here, I think it's a bit way too high. I'll set it to one bar. Maybe I can change the pitch settings in here a little bit. Set the speed to something a little bit faster. Tiny bit less modulation, just like so. And I'll set the same value for everyone. Just like so. And now we have this. And now if I'll add some delay, check this out. Thank <laughs> you. 
What I love about this technique is that you can really abuse the cutoff, the resonance, and the more you abuse the resonance, the out of glass here it gets. It's really nice. So let's say you're like lazy, you don't want to go through the hustle of finding nice percussions that will work for this sound. And you know, you want to keep it simple. What would you do? In this case, let's take Serum for example, and see what we can do with it. So pretty simple. We can take Serum, turn off the main oscillator, turn on the nose oscillator, set it to something ARP white, I think sounds really nice. Now I have this. Pretty cool. Let's set the main envelope to something really fast. Something like this should do the job really well. And what is really unique about Serum and really makes it irreplaceable for me is the fact that it has all of these awesome filters, which most of them are really underrated, you know, and under the radar. One of these filters is the COM filter. Now, I can set the main filter as our COM filter in here. But to be honest, when we use the main filter, it doesn't give us the results that we would like. Check this out. I'll set the cutoff in here to 51.9 G-sharp. I'll give it a lot of resonance, give it some drive, and check this out. We don't really get the result that we're waiting for. Let me turn off this filter in here, FX filter, set it to COM plus, Let's set the cutoff again to 51.9, crank the re resonance just like so, and check this out. We're getting there, right? I don't know why, but it just works like this. So what we can do in this case, let me add a random arpeggiator. I'll use the one I made, not grid, in here. I made a tutorial on that, so I'll leave the link right in here. Now. Let me turn off this filter for a second. We have this. Nothing too special. I've just added one and eight notes in here to get this kind of groove. Turn on the first filter in here. I'll set it to bandpass. Okay. Turn down the drive, give it some resonance. Now we have this. Pretty cool. I modulate the cutoff with note on random. Now we have this. Now if I'll turn on the second filter, check this out. Pretty cool, right? Now let's crank that resonance all the way up and check what we will get. We got those really nice metallic psychedelic drops, right? Now let's spice this sound out a little bit and add a phaser after it. Phasers are awesome. And I think they're a little bit overused, but they, they're just awesome, man. So I'll take the phaser plus from Bitwig in here. I'll set it to the MF algorithm, just like so. Crank the feedback, turn down the speed, give it some depth. Now we have this. Pretty awesome, right? Now let's add a delay. For this one, I'll use delay plus two. I've kept Phaser Plus on its own free running LFO. I've set it to, yeah, 0 0.12 hertz, something like this. Just for the sake of a demonstration, it's better to give it an LFO, which is synced to the beat, or not. Do it the way you like. But uh, yeah, and with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. And if you like this content and you want to support the channel, you can consider becoming one of my Patreon or buy my presets on Gumroad. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great one.